Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tell Flare Mouse. We've got another blast from the past, and we'll be featuring this very old Sears and Roebuck 22 long ammunition. Today we're going to take a look at this little box of 22 long ammo, not long rifle, but long, which was sold at Sears and Roebuck Company in 1932 to 1933. Now this box of ammo actually comes from Danny, his neighbor who was a widow was clean out her late husband's safe, found this old ammo, and asked Danny if he would like to have it, so he gladly accepted it. Now this box of ammo is a little faded, it's got a little bit of wear to it, but considering its age, nearly 88 years old, that's not too bad. Now the first thing we want to point out about this box is the rather sloppy print job on it. Now by today's printing standards, having a misaligned print like that would be a, a defect, they would throw it away. But remember, this was manufacturing during the Great Depression, and they were pinching pennies and salvaged everything they could. So that box was still accepted. Now the next thing I want to address are the intentionally misspelled words, stay clean and extra. Now, I don't know if this was just the style of the time to intentionally misspell words, or if it was more of a trademark thing. But this kind of drives me crazy because I remember in the second or third grade taking a spelling test of I can't remember what the word was, but I misspelled it simply because it was misspelled on a package or billboard that I saw. And yes, I'm still mad about that. <laughs> now the next thing we want to talk about is the styling of the package. During the 1930s, the Art Deco movement was finally making its way into the United States. It had been popular in Europe at least a decade before that. Art Deco movement influenced the design of many things from buildings to locomotives to cars to you know advertising on little boxes of 22 ammo. I never thought the art appreciation class I took in college would ever uh, benefit me later in life but as we can see here the influences that we see are just the bold colors that they use on an ammo box that blue and kind of maroon color. Uh, colors you would normally not associate with a box of ammo. Now we also see a horizontal line across the bottom which represents the horizon but you also have the the vertical lines which represent maybe hope and things are going to be looking up in other words a sign of optimism and then we have the text itself it's bold three-dimensional it pops out at you and that s in stay clean that lazy s is just another element from the art deco movement let's look at the other text on the box be sure to read they really think this is important it's mostly about making sure your firearm is suitable for, you know, smokeless powder. Now one thing I think is odd is they say these cartridges are for rifles only. I certainly couldn't think of any reason why you couldn't use them in a revolver. I even asked a few firearm experts why this would be and nobody had an answer for me. But they thought the warning was so important they printed it three times on this little tiny box. On the other side of the box it basically explains how these are non-corrosive rounds. Uh, smokeless powder has been used at this point for nearly 30 years, but corrosive primers were still kind of common at this time. I have some ammo from 1971 that still had corrosive primers in them. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, or, or maybe not, because I'm just a guy on the internet that can't read your mind. Now it looks like there's one round missing, so Danny, I did not steal one of your bullets. Upon closer examination, we can see that these rounds are in pretty darn good condition. They have a little bit of cardboard fuzz on them. Let's pull one out and take a closer look, and as you can see, it looks like it was it could have been manufactured last year. Very good condition. And these rounds are head stamped with an XR on them. Now you may think that Sears manufactures ammo or did at one time, but they never did. These were actually manufactured by Federal. Now the box says these are lead lubricated, but I believe that means they're bare lead lubricated with wax, or possibly even grease. But these definitely have a wax-like material on them. I didn't taste it to see if it tasted like bacon grease or anything like that. <laughs> but you can see where the bullets were touching in the box, you know, big blobs of wax there. Even though the wax did a beautiful job of preserving these rounds, the purpose of the wax was to prevent lead fouling in the barrel. Now even at this time they did have copper plated and cadmium plated bullets to also try to prevent lead fouling. And some companies even used Cosmoline. A surprising number of viewers just would not take my word for it that this was Cosmoline and they insisted it was wax. 
I mean, if it looks like Cosmoline, smells like Cosmoline, has the same viscosity as Cosmoline, well, it must be wax then, right? And then we had a couple of viewers that claimed that lead does not oxidize. Well, this is proof of it. These rounds must have been from the Civil War or something like that. No, these are 25-year-old Remington Thunderbolt bullets. Completely unprotected lead will oxidize. And these rounds were always stored indoors in a dry environment. So hopefully this time I've done a better job of conveying to you just how remarkably well preserved these 88-year-old 22 rounds from Sears are. On the left we have a modern CCI long round and on the right we have a 22 long rifle mini mag. Now if I just showed you this photo without any other context you'd probably have a hard time believing that the round in the middle is 88 years old. Now at this time I do not know if Danny will let us test fire any of these but I do know that he has a revolver, a 22 revolver that his grandfather gave him. If that's something you really want to see give this video a thumbs up let us know in the comments. That way we can make a separate video and YouTube can't demonetize this video. Most of the research for this video came from this website, 22 Box Identification Guide. I'm not going to even put a link to it. You'll have to find it on your own. It's a really small group of people that are really dedicated at identifying and documenting old 22 boxes of ammo. That's all they do. It'll blow your mind how well curated this site is. For example, just the Sears ammo, they have nearly every variation of Sears ammo boxes from 1927 all the way up to 1979. Now this site is best described as an online museum, but this site is so good I just couldn't keep it to myself. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, we'll see you next time.